Well, I can't say I didn't know this was coming. That very audible beep with a uh, visible warning light on the Gyro Air G700 dust processor tells me that I've done enough work to fill the 32 gallon hopper of uh, shavings and sawdust, so I need to go change it. And rolling the hoppers out, you can see that it wasn't kidding. This is uh, definitely full and ready to be dumped out so I can continue working. I'm going to go through the process here to show you how simple it is to uh, empty these hoppers out and get back to work. The bags aren't overly expensive, but I choose to just recycle them by dumping the contents into a big trash bag that I can haul away and then just reuse these. I've reused these bags probably 10 times or so and they're still fine. So there's a, an elastic strap that comes off easily and then the dust bags just lift up out of the bin. This one uh, smaller in size and it's farther along in the airstream so all the fine dust goes in here. This is pretty powdery uh, but I've been milling a bunch of uh, ponderosa pine so this is still uh, fine sawdust, about like you'd see in a dust bag on a miter saw. When I'm cutting particle board, where everything that comes off it is dust, this, uh, the consistency of the material in this is like flour, and this is um, what ends up in here is more like wood sand, for lack of a better term. There's quite a bit of graphite down in the bottom of here. I was sharpening the giant pencils and all that stuff went in these hoppers also. This is the larger of the two bags, obviously, and generally gathers the coarser sawdust. Not exclusively, but in general. And there's quite a bit in here. But you can see the bags are sturdy, plenty uh, capable of lifting out the shavings so that they can be dumped. And I can get about one and a half bin loads into this big um, Gorilla garbage bag in between times. So that's not a problem. And like I said, these bags aren't all that expensive. You can just tie them up and dispose them that way also, but I just reuse them. And I've learned that to get the elastic band back on uh, to secure the bags, it's easier just to lift the hopper off the rails so that I can get that elastic band all the way around. But either with new bags or reusing the old ones, it's just a matter of slipping the lip of the bag around the gasket on the top of the hopper. And I just leave this down far enough so that that elastic band catches it. Although once the hopper is locked into place, this gasket seals up against the inside of the cabinet, so it's not like the bags are going to blow off or anything. About all there is to it. This elastic strap isn't all that strong or robust, but I'll slip it back around here to hold everything in place. The bag will fill itself out with uh, uh, pressure from the air and the weight of the sawdust, so it doesn't have to be all laid in there nicely. Um, there's a bit more sawdust in this cabinet than there normally would be, but the last time this was emptied, some guy I know rolled the hopper back in, but forget to use the latch. I told him not to do that again. Because if the hopper isn't drawn up to the bottom of the cabinet, it's messy. But as it is, that's all there is to emptying those hoppers. And securing the lid means I'm ready to go back to work. And all I need to do to reset the unit after it receives the bin full signal is to power the machine down and turn it back on and it's ready to go. Well, there's one more really cool feature about the Gyro Air G700 dust processor that I've been wanting to show you, so I'll take this opportunity to do it now. 
One of the greatest benefits of gyro air technology is that it removes 99.9% .9 of the dust that enters the machine and drops it into the hoppers before it ever reaches the pleated filters on this end of the machine. So there's very little cleaning required for the filters. They're pleated filters and turning the red knob uh, rubs those filters and loosens the dust particles that get on there and then that dust falls into a small port at the bottom of the filter chamber. I'll spin the machine around so that you can see those two ports better and then I want to show you the clean out process for the filter chambers that works with this machine. It's pretty remarkable. The slope on the floor for the drain gets to be a bit of a problem at times like this but it's manageable. So the really cool feature about the machine is it basically has a self-cleaning function. I can just fire up the machine, open up the port and then re-pull the dust that's collected in here. It'll go back through the machine and take out 99.9% .9 of the dust so that the filters are essentially self-cleaning and it's not just pulling all that fine dust right back into the filter. Most of it drops out in the hoppers. So it's a very cool process and proves the efficiency of the dust removal engineering that goes on inside these two chambers. So I'll fire up the machine and you'll see the dust coming and going and how the cleaning process works. So here we go, I got the machine fired up and I'll clean this back port first. There seems to be a little more dust in the front port, so I'll do the back one first. Opening the cap, you can see a little rush of dust. And then I'll turn the handle to rub the filter pleats and shake any loose dust off of them to get a nice thorough cleaning. And I just close up that port, open the other one. And there's more dust in this chamber for some reason, but the cleaning process works the same. There's a rush of dust. As the air flows, I turn the filter pleat cleaning knob and get the whole thing cleaned out. Just because I'm doing a video, I'll go back through the cleaning process for both the filters and then I'll open up the hoppers and we'll see the results. Well, it's pretty obvious that I didn't rehearse that self-cleaning feature. There was quite a bit of dust built up in the front filter, uh, not quite so much in the back. And it took a while to, to clean it out, but as the process went on, less and less dust came through because it was getting captured in the bins. And keep in mind that that's the finest dust, so it's really pushing the capability of the machine to get that dust to spin out of the airflow before it gets to the filter. I did a short cleanup on those two ports some time back after I cut up a whole stack of particle board because I thought, wow, with this fine dust, it's going to plug those filters. At the time, there was barely a handful of flour in the bottom, so I just misinterpreted that information and let this go longer than I should have between filter cleanings. Older and wiser. But after just a few minutes, uh, going back and forth from one port to the other, uh, those filters are wonderfully clean and good for a whole bunch more work with uh, that cleaning process taken care of, which I'll probably do now oh, every few times 
that I use the machine just to make sure those filters are uh, staying clean and not getting blocked up like they did this time. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the hoppers and see what this self-cleaning process pulled out of the filters. And there you have it. This sawdust has got a layer of that super fine dust on there. That's got to be a lot of just the finest wood flour. And it looks fairly grubby because of the graphite powder from cutting those giant pencil leads. But you can see the consistency of the material that's captured in this bin. It's just as fine as can be. And that's the main stuff that I want to keep out of the air in the shop for the sake of my lungs. But the fact that dust this fine spins out of the airflow before it gets to the filters uh, to me is the main benefit of the gyro air technology. So with that bit of routine maintenance taken care of, I'm going to close this up, remembering to engage the bin lock and get back to work. And the project I'm working on is milling up all these uh, blocks and these pieces here for some built-in storage shelving. And I'll just wrap the video up by inviting viewers to subscribe to Next Level Carpentry if you haven't already. It's free, and I try to upload content that I think will be useful and meaningful to anybody that will take the time to watch the videos. And I hope you enjoyed that little bit of insight into the capabilities of the G700 dust processor. It's quite a machine. It's not for everyone or every shop, but if you're thinking about one or interested in it, you can go to my website, thenextlevelcarpenter.shop, uh, check out more about the machine, and take advantage of a free shipping offer that I still have available for anyone that's interested. I apologize if this comes across as a little infomercially. Um, mainly, I want to show you what's possible with that particular dust processor as insight into what new technologies are making available for wood shops today. As I clear up my backlog of work, I'm hoping to get to the Journeyman Sawhorse build project fairly soon. It's the next major video project that I've got in the pipeline, and I'm looking forward to doing it and sharing that video with you. So thanks for taking the time to check this out, and until next time, thanks for watching.